Hello everyone, this is Ralf and uh, ever since I got my Denon DJ Prime 4 Plus and sound switch I had a trouble connecting the two and uh, I talked a lot to sound switch customer support and kudos to those guys they are really amazing and helped sorting everything out. I thought I'd make a little video since um, I found a lot of the documentation and a lot of the stuff that you find in forums and on reddit is actually pretty ambiguative or not complete. So first of all, let's go through some versioning here. This is the Denon DJ Prime 4 Plus running Engine OS 4.0. This is an M1 Apple Silicon MacBook running macOS Sequoia 15.2 and I've got SoundSwitch version 2.9 installed. Both machines have Ethernet connections to a switch. This is um, the first uh, point I want to make. Um, some of the documentation kind of states that you need a direct cable between the Denon device and your laptop. That's not true. They can also be connected to a switch and I just use an off-the-shelf Netgear switch here which is also connected to the internet. I've got Wi-Fi switched off on both machines. So while the Denon DJ Prime 4 Plus is already running, let's uh, start sound switch here. And um, the order of things is important. Um, so I usually start with the Denon device already on and then I'll start sound switch. If we select perform mode here and one of our shows, this is just um, a little demo I've done and a couple of things um, you see here. Right in the top left it says engine DJ and that's actually what you've got to select. So if it doesn't say engine DJ go through the four dots here and pick engine DJ. Do not choose Ableton Link. Um, the Denon Prime 4 also supports Ableton Link but um, if you pick engine DJ it's actually using a protocol called stage link which has been invented by Denon and it's a better it's a deeper integration between the two devices for example the Denon device can also send IDs of songs to SoundSwitch which will allow SoundSwitch to run auto scripts as opposed to just running auto loops um, if you pick able link as the link protocol that's not supported so um, in the top left here it says connected and there's a green dot here and if you click on the little eye it also confirms that it was successful establishing a connection to the Denon hardware. Now um, this is one of those aspects which I found a little bit irritating because um, the green dot doesn't seem to actually mean that it's really really connected. I had situations where my network wasn't even connected to a network but it still said connected. So what I found out is that as long as this little green dot is not blinking it doesn't really mean that it is successfully connected. So um, I also talked to SoundSwitch support that they might um, probably think about some improvements in the user interface in the future. So the next things we want to check is we go to a sound switch settings and um, I go on the general tab here. First um, I start this little visualizer here and so we can actually see some simulated lights and then on the general tab I've picked engine DJ and um, the all-in-one hardware option and then on the performance mode tab I'm in the four deck setup but I have only activated channel 1 and channel 2. I've deselected faders 3 and 4 because I'm actually only using deck 1 and 2 and it's also up fader only. Um, if you pick deck 1 to 4 you actually can't change any of these. So some of the documentation recommends that you switch to deck 1 and 2 which will also allow you to pick from one of the other fader behaviors here. But the thing is, as long as you use 
stage link as a protocol between both devices, the Denon device will actually identify as a four deck device. So if you have read somewhere that you should pick deck one and two and restart sound switch, if you do that, you'll find yourself ending up with decks one and four selected again, because the Denon device actually tells SoundSwitch, hey, I'm a four deck device. So no matter what you are setting here, it'll always revert back to decks one to four, but, but we are fine with that. Now let's uh, hit done, go to MIDI and go to our auto loops here. So the next thing is important. The Denon device re-establishes a connection to SoundSwitch whenever you load a new track onto your DAX. And that's important. The actual connection is established once you load a track. So um, I have nothing loaded on any of the DAX right now. If I would have preloaded something, chances are the connection doesn't work because you have to have sound switch running with all of these settings um, made before you actually load your first song. And that's uh, what I'm going to do. Um, let's go to sources. I go to my stick and I go to, let's say, um, one of those songs, put it to the right deck and let's get back to the library, choose another song, put it to the left deck. So now I've uh, preloaded both decks with songs and let's um, fire the left deck. And you will see I started the player on the left deck and immediately one of the auto loops is running. I don't see anything in the visualizer yet. And this is because of the up fader settings. As soon as I turn this fader for deck one up, you will see that it's actually starting to output DMX to the fixtures. And um, this is exactly what we want. And um, now I can start my second player and notice if I switch decks here, the order loop is changing. So this is order loop two in bank one, and this is order loop four in bank one. And this is exactly how you want it. Um, again, if you turn down the fader, the auto loop keeps running, but the intensity is to zero, so that's, it's all dark on the stage. And uh, here we're back. And we can go here and probably pick a different auto loop. And you will see that when I switch back to the other deck, it jumps actually back to the auto loop associated with that track. And that's just wonderful. Um, one more thing, if I would have scripted a task, scripts are light shows associated for a specific song, then um, the Denon device would also transmit the information required to identify the script to sound switch. And instead of playing an order loop, it would play the associated script. I'm planning to do um, another video on the entire workflow um, to get this working. So um, like and subscribe and you will be notified once that video goes online. So thanks once again. Thank you to the great guys from SoundSwitch for helping me with all of this. And if you've got any questions or comments, feel free. I'm monitoring the comment section and hope to hear from you. Bye bye.